Before I get started, I just want you to know that this is part two of three videos. If you'd like to see the first part if you haven't already, go ahead and click there. If you have, then continue watching. Enjoy. Welcome back people watching this video. Welcome to part two, which we talk about two games for the PS2. There's gotta be something to that. We'll be looking at the dark turn that Twisted Metal took with uh, the next game, the, the first PS2 game. Uh, let, let, let's get started. This game came out the year after the PS2 had already come out, and uh, other than it being the first PS2 Twisted Metal game, it's also the first mature rated Twisted Metal game. Well, you know, the game itself, not the online version, that, that's the T rated thing, but you know. This game also happens to be the very first Twisted Metal game I've ever owned. Well, officially owned anyway. Oh, and that certain game that they made for PS2 before Twisted Metal Small Brawl? This, this was it. I, I mentioned something about it in the previous video. That's not how the music goes in the song. Now there are some unlockable characters in this game, along with some unlockable levels, but thank god that Sweet Tooth is already on there and you don't have to put in a code or anything to unlock him. He's already there. Though for some reason they decided to put him near the end of the list. This is the first Twisted Metal to feature Sweet Tooth wearing the mask rather than wearing makeup and that would continue on in the rest of the series. This game actually has great loading time. Here it is, lades and gents! No! What? Shut up! Don't ever say that! Don't follow that stupid trend of shortening words that don't need to be shortened. Uh... Take that shit. Okay. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Thank this you. is the uh, Twist Metal Black gameplay. As you can tell, they really pushed for making this game really dark. You can tell by the graphics, not just being PS2 and a little better, but it consists of like a lot of grays and browns and blacks and all that. A lot of things that just make it a really dark game. You can hear it in the music too, although it has that kind of early 6th gen random upbeat music sometimes. This game is pretty well fixed and it was, um, uh, I don't think that was supposed to happen that way. Well, other than moments like that, this game functions pretty well. Okay, that's like the coolest ice cube truck I've ever seen. The controls are about the same as the other Twisted Metals. I mean, there's a few things like being able to look through a rear view mirror that they added, but just little things like that. And in some of the levels, there's some pretty cool ways to unlock some characters. I mean, I already have them unlocked, I don't really have any clips of it, but they're pretty cool. Yeah, it's the hottest Shut thing. Shut up, Git. Also, Dan, are we gonna ignore the fact that the head on the Sweet Tooth vehicle is, uh, transparent? Well, that may have been due to, uh, probably because, um, I, I'm not sure. I, I have no idea why it's like that. But apparently it goes untransparent when you transform into a robot. This is probably my second favorite Twisted Metal game. But the reason it's not my absolute favorite is because, well, I know I'm only showing you two levels, but they kind of look the same, in a way. This whole game is just darkness. I mean, that's the way to describe this game, it's just darkness. There's not a whole lot to it other than that. I mean, these levels are fun, but, you know, it gets kind of tiring just seeing the same colors over and over. It, you know, with the levels looking kind of similar. It, it's... You know, the the other games had like, you know, colorful areas, even though it's supposed to be a dark game, they at least had some sunny areas and some, you know, it just looked different. And this one, it looks kind of the same. But that definitely doesn't make it a bad game, because like I said, it's my second favorite Twisted Metal. These levels are humongous. Honestly, these two levels I've shown you are like the smallest ones on this game. I mean, it can kind of suck if you have two players only and you're in a huge level, so it makes the gameplay kind of slow, but if you have more than two players, it can be pretty awesome. Or if you just play the single player mode, it can be pretty awesome, depending on where you're at. Hey Dan, what about that snowy level? 
What snow? Oh yeah! There's a level on here called Snowy Road, which has, well, snowy roads. And trust me, this is the brightest level in the game. You don't see anything, in, in fact, it still looks kind of dark with the fog and everything. But this is the brightest level in the game. By dark, I, think I mean. think we get it, Dan. Oh, and did I mention the story in this game? The stories, I mean? No. Get, I was getting to that. Three months in the nut house. It was the longest I'd ever been confined. So a few people had been killed. It wasn't my fault. Please! No! I got a family! Shut Please. up and no. bleed, you motherfucker! The story modes are really what give this game its M rating. The old man's curse was beginning to piss me off. And Calypso in this game looks quite a bit different. He's bald. So he called himself. It was a stupid name. As much as I had those old urges of mine, I kept them to myself for the moment. I figured I'd play along with his little game. After all, I could always kill him later. Yes, make the killing come. Just make it later, you know? But here's where the story gets really dark. All my greatest achievements flashed before my eyes. The scale of what I'd done, the sheer volume of people I'd killed, it was breathtaking. But like all good things, it had to end <laughs> Good sometime. things. When they captured me, the only thing I could think was, what a waste. All those people I hadn't killed yet. Killed oh my gosh, what a disappointment. The night of my execution, there must have been over a thousand people gathered outside to watch me fry. I was upset about that. There should have been more. As you can tell, this game this really earned its mature rating. And since I don't really want to spoil anything for you, I'll just not show you the ending part. That's all I've got to say about Twisted Metal Black. It's a pretty good game. Despite the problems I've talked about. Now let's move on to the only other Twisted Metal game on the PS2. Twisted Metal Head-On, Extra Twisted Edition. This game actually started out as a PSP game, but unlike a lot of other PSP ports to PS2, this one actually comes with some improvements and some extra stuff. Like a lot of extra stuff. Once again, the company changed their name from Incog Inc. to Eat Sleep Play. And they are the current people who work on Twisted Metal. We have a couple of choices here, so... Well, obviously we're going to be going with Twisted Metal head-on. Wait a minute. No. It can't be. It just can't be. You've got to be kidding me. You have such great graphics to work with. And you go with cell shaded! Cell shaded graphics almost never work. No matter how much people try to say it doesn't look aged when they're like that. It looks aged to begin with! At least when Twisted Metal 3 did this, kind of, it was a little more understandable. But here, it's. there's just no excuse. Well, I guess it could be worse. They could have even worse graphics for the gameplay and do more than just cell shading. You know, make it almost literally look like garbage and give it some really boring gameplay. <clears throat> you know, I don't think that's supposed to hap 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 Anyway, here's the game. From what I can remember, I think this game actually has the biggest selection of characters in any Twisted Metal. And uh, apparently here we have the Bashful edition of the Sweet Tooth Vehicle. Big Blue Stadium. Come on guys, let's, let's be a little more creative here, and, and the fact is... It's not even blue. Okay, well guys, come on now, let's try not to break the game just yet. Now you may notice one of the immediate improvements, the graphics. In other PSP game ports to the PS2, they would just keep the PSP graphics. And here, it looks like they improved it a little bit. If you see some of the character models, you'll notice that it hasn't been a huge improvement. I mean, these aren't exactly the best graphics on the PS2, but they're still pretty good, and at least they tried. The gameplay feels almost the same as Twisted Metal Black, as you can imagine. Now I would talk a little more about this stage and about the game while showing the stage, but there's a lot more I gotta show you in this game, so I just, I'm gonna go ahead and skip it. So, you know, because skipping 
it can be good to uh, uh okay okay get all right you know being interrupted by get Dan, can Dan, I'm what gonna have to interrupt you here um i'm probably gonna be with the audience what is that i'm not exactly sure what you mean but i'm gonna assume you mean the character i'm using yes the character you're using this is dark tooth and sweet tooth is one of the drivers that's it that, that's all you're gonna say about that i mean who is even the other character I think that was Marcus, but I don't really have time to explain the whole story of this. Uh, I'll save that for some other video. I was going to say, maybe you should explain the story a little more. Alright then, moving dead. on. The really cool thing about these stages is they're a little bit Twisted Metal 2 inspired. In fact, this is actually a direct sequel to Twisted Metal 2. After the reputation that 3 and 4 got, they figured, well, we'll just ignore the events of 3 and 4 and just have head on. Which was a pretty good idea, although this is still not really the greatest Twisted Metal. In a way, it tried to be kind of like a remake of 2. I mean, I know it's a sequel to 2, but you know. What I'm about to let you hear, ladies and gentlemen, is the differences between the music of the Twisted Metal head-on for PSP and for PS2. Which is all fine and everything, but uh, listen to the differences between the final boss music of the PSP version and the PS2 version. I am like 90% sure that this was a mistake and not intentional. Or if it was, then, well, you know, this is obviously the worst last boss music ever. Now let's look at the extra game on here, Twisted Metal Lost. Which is, I'll explain here in a second, but that was a pretty cool transition. <laughs> Don't ever laugh like that again. The thing I'm about to show you was apparently a cancelled sequel, and this kind of explains it, but I'm not going to sit here and wait through the whole thing. There's only four levels in this section, but it's still really cool that it's here. About every character from Twisted Metal Black is in this game. Obviously, because it was a cancelled sequel to Twisted Metal Black. Well, one noticeable difference in Sweet Tooth's vehicle is that the head is no longer transparent in regular form. The physics in this game are about the same as Twisted Metal head-ons, which I guess makes sense. If you're wondering why this is still only rated T, even though I'm basically playing Twisted Metal Black gameplay, well, as I mentioned earlier, the Twisted Metal Black gameplay isn't what made it M-rated, it was the story. That's why Twisted Metal Black Online was only rated T. The levels, like in Twisted Metal Black, Wait, Dan, are pretty are big. It's Gold Tooth, Git, alright? Okay. It's gold tooth. Got my it. sweet tooth, okay? Yeah. Alright. Gold tooth. For some reason in this game, you can seem to jump a lot higher than you could in the other ones. I don't know. Anyway, gold tooth is basically sweet tooth. I think he may be more powerful or something, but I'm not sure. It's just sweet tooth with a different look. I would say that's about all there is to say about Twisted Metal Head On Extra Twisted Edition. Try saying that really fast. But. It's, uh, 
There's a lot more extras, but due to time, I'm not going to show you all of them. There's some like behind the scenes videos, some uh, extra stuff like cancelled endings to the first game. I never talked about the endings for a good reason. It's mostly due to spoilers, but also because I didn't get any recordings of them, except for like these. This was going to be in the first game, but you may see why it wasn't. You just don't know. You don't know what it was like for me. You just, and we just, and I, and you, and them. You don't know. And, well, actually, there is one last thing I want to show you on here before I end this. Something else that was also going to be in Twisted Metal Black 2. Ladies and gentlemen, Sweet Tour. The first time you ever got to use Sweet Tooth on foot in an official Twisted Metal game. There was probably going to be a lot more to it, but in this one you just look up like different development stories and stuff like that. I have to say, for an overweight psychopath, he's a pretty athletic guy. It was really disappointing that this got cancelled. This would have been pretty awesome to have in an official game. I mean, you know, not like this, but not as extra. You know, you know what I mean. But anyway, let's just leave it on that note. Here's my review scores for these games. So that just kind of happened. Well, that was shorter, in a way. Join me for part three when we look at a PS3. Okay, I need to solve all these puns. Join me next time for part three whenever I talk about Twisted Metal on the PS3. And some people consider it the 2012 edition or something. I don't know. See you next time. This was part two of three videos. If you'd like to see part three, go ahead and click here. If it doesn't work for some reason, then it may not be out yet. Remember, this one took a little bit to come out. Anyway, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. And remember to subscribe if you want to see more of these videos, Dan Get Show, or just any of the Entitled Team videos in general. And again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.